expert hydrogeologist and a tribal chief. My name is Jack Tierney. I'm a freshman and I was an alternate on the team. Not uh, here right now is uh, Claire Muscat. She played uh, two witness roles. My name is Brian Tanner. I'm a freshman and I was an alternate for the national competition. And on behalf of the entire team, we'd really like to thank um, CEIF and the High School Parents Association for their generous donations to our team because we wouldn't have been able to go if it weren't for them. And we'd like to thank Mrs. Muscat as well, who, uh, Dr. Muscat, for joining us she on our trip. She was a chaperone, uh, chaperone on the team as well. Great, great. Any comments from the board? Yeah. How high do I have to raise it? Um, I'd like to make a few comments. Uh, I, I'm surprised Jeff only gave me two weeks of, I swear I spent more than two weeks helping them. But um, I, I, I want to congratulate you on your uh, tremendous accomplishment. I was following it on a Twitter feed from uh, Dick O'Meara. I don't think people realize how much time these kids put into it. When I was doing it with them, um, I, I think I put in around 40 hours a week. And these kids did it over a six-week period. Um, far longer than any sports practice, far longer than any other extracurricular activity. It's physically and intellectually demanding, and uh, um, I, I thought they did a tremendous job. And I, I wanted to uh, also compliment them on their, at least in, in when I was with them, um, I found them to be very uh, hardworking, very receptive. Um, and unlike the, when I taught trial practice to uh, third-year law students at Yale or at University of Maine, they were very receptive to constructive criticism, unlike the, some of the people at Yale, but um, um, I thought it was, I think it was an excellent experience, and uh, I was very proud um, of them. I was very happy to help, and um, I'm very pleased that they were able to go to a national competition like this. They did seem to, I think you went against California first, so sort of like going against a small country in your first yeah. scrimmage, but um, um, I, I do see some excellent budding lawyers there, and hopefully if I keep helping with them, um, they'll decide not to go into law and become something useful. But yeah, in fact, did a great job. I was very, very pleased to help. And um, I do want to thank Mary Page and Dick O'Meara, who put in an unbelievable amount of hours far beyond whatever small stipend Mary gets and the no stipend that Dick gets. It is an enormous task for both of them and, um, and for all of you as well. And, uh, I and the school board and Cape are very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Let them... Clear. We'll wait just a moment prior to moving <clears throat> on. All right, we will move on now to item um, 5D, Presidential Scholar, Jack <clears throat> Queenie. Huge honor. Yes, it is. And again, this is from um, Mr. Shedd. Jack is a senior and the valedictorian of his graduating class. During his years at Cape Elizabeth High School, Jack has been a quiet leader and an outstanding role model for all students. Last year, he was awarded one of the school's highest award a Citizenship Award for Leadership. Jack is a science and tinkering geek. I mean that in the most respectful way. Who has led our school science and robotics team for four years. Among his friends, it is well known that Jack keeps odd hours when he gets his mind on figuring out a problem, and they occasionally receive calls from Jack at unusual times because he wants to talk and share. In addition to his geeky side, Jack is an accomplished athlete, anchoring our defense in soccer, and this year starting on defense on the school's lacrosse team. Jack has recently been honored as one of only 141 presidential scholars in the country. Being selected as a presidential scholar is the most prestigious award for education in this country. 
there are only two scholars from the state of Maine. Presidential scholarship status is determined by academic excellence and involvement in school and community activities at a level of creativity and passion that makes, um, that makes scholars a small group of America's finest minds and finest young people. We are thrilled for Jack, who will be attending, appropriately enough, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the fall. Each presidential scholar gets to nominate one teacher who has had the most influence on him to attend a scholar conference and award ceremony in Washington, D.C. Jack has nominated chemistry teacher Doug Worthily to attend with him. My highest congratulations to Jack Queenie for receiving this presidential scholar award. Quite an honor. Yes, a huge honor. And um, I think the last time a, a Cape resident received this award was 2006, Bethany Roy, I believe. Um, so it's been quite a while. And um, our um, huge congratulations um, go to Jack. He is an extraordinary individual. And I, I don't think. Um, We'll see another one like Jack in a long time. Those of you who know him um, know uh, his integrity, his um, passion for learning. Um, but most importantly, he is just a compassionate, um, good human being. And so um, I'm thrilled that he got this award. And um, congratulations to Jack. Uh, anything else? Anyone else like to make a comment? How do you top that one? I know. It's about as big as it gets. Um, we will move on then to item 6A. Uh, we have a resignation. You have a resignation from a high school teacher, Carrie Curtis. Okay. Any comments around that or just we have a resignation? Yeah, Kerry's got an interesting uh, position. He's going to be teaching at an international school in China. Um, that's why he is leaving us. Mm -hmm. He'll be missed. He will be missed. He'll be missed. Yeah, Kerry is an institution, but we wish him well. Um, and look forward to hearing how his, his uh, new position goes. Okay, we will move on then to item seven, new business. 7A, consideration to approve a proposed April t um, 2012 um, EF tour to Madrid and Andalusia from Lisa and Jack Melanson. I think the background information in the packet is self-explanatory. Um, I don't think there's anything unusual about this trip, it's similar to others that uh, you have seen. So, okay. if there are any questions, I'll... Is this just to approve the uh, participation or is there a, a cost element they're requesting to prove? I couldn't, they included the price, but was that just for illustrative purposes? Yes, okay. the cost is borne by the students. That's a good, good point to make public. Right. Um, if the cost is borne by the students, though, does this fall under, um, Kathy, do you think this falls under the um, fundraising of, I think it's a $30,000 trip. Is that right? Oh, I didn't look at that. Let me look. Again. If it is, we would have time to bring that back to the okay. board because it's the request for next day. Next day. I was just thinking we could I probably does. get it a good point. all done in one, one motion, if possible. But um, how many students I, I didn't see? Do you have the, the paper, David? No, I just have a couple questions. I do have the papers, but um, it, it just seems a bit sparse, and I had some questions. I, I kind of wish that. Um, one of the Melances were here. I mean, is this open to all students? You know, what is the cost for students? When are they going to be going? It has uh, been in it the it past, does, David. It does say. It, most of the information is it's in on this, here. right here. It looks like it's $1,900 per student. 
Well, mine was cut off. I couldn't tell. Yeah, it's right down here. Never mind. That's the program. That's the itinerary. That's the program fee. It's the itinerary, right? Is it like Spanish class? Uh, just, or all no, just I think it's open to all students. Right. Yep. It's just a foreign, you know, it's a trip that um, Jack and Lisa have done in the past, have mm -hmm. taken um, students over to Europe um, as part of um, the break. And I don't believe it falls under uh, the amount required for our approval for fundraising. So I'm just curious, when, when, which break will they be going over? April. Any other questions or concerns? All right. Um, do I have a motion? Uh, yes. I move that we approve the proposed April 2012 EF tour to Mad Madrid and Andalusia from Lisa and Jack Melanson as described in our packet. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. All right, we will move on to item um, 5B, or 7B, I'm sorry. Um, consideration of the following policies for first reading. Uh, do I have a motion? Yes, um, I'd like to move that we approve. I'm going to say all three of them, and then we can discuss them individually if you'd like, or would you like to do them individually? Uh, do we have um, anybody for any or one of the comments other? or questions? Is it okay to do them as a group? Mm -hmm. Fine yeah. with me. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I move that we approve <coughs> policy BEDH, public participation at board meetings, policy DF, and just as a side, DFR fundraising, and policy EHA, which is a new policy electronic signature and filing. And you may recall that I pulled the JLCA. Okay. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, any discussion about any of the items? No. Do you, I'll, or the two do you want me to go over the changes? Sure. Or, uh, Why don't up, we do it for the record? The, okay. Um, on policy BEDH, public participation at board meetings, we have added um, a paragraph that replaces a paragraph. The second paragraph will now read, in order that the board may fairly and adequately discharge its overall responsibilities, citizens or groups wishing to address the board on a topic not otherwise on the agenda must submit a request in writing to the superintendent at, le at least one full week in advance of the scheduled meeting. The superintendent and or board chair may add the item to the agenda at their discretion. And it replaces the um, prior paragraph. And that's the only change in that one. Um, policy DF fundraising, we have added a sentence that um, identifies what fundraising is as it's come up in the past from um, groups. We've added the sentence, fundraising is the selling of a product, providing a service or activity, or requesting donations. School fundraising, direct, school fundraising directly funds school programs and students. This is an um, answer to questions that groups have had that if we write a check, does that mean it's fundraising? And the answer is yes, it is. Uh, and this dovetails into the school board's need to know when there are large amounts being fundraised. And um, also, in DFR, which is the Administrative Procedure for Fundraising, paragraph C, you will see that we have added, this $20,000 amount allows the Cape Elizabeth School Board to evaluate the level of financial commitment being asked of Cape Elizabeth citizenry, including but not limited to parent groups, booster, and community members. Uh, that's again so that there's clarification. And I saw there's a typo, I'll have that fixed. And the last um, policy is policy EHA, which is electronic signature and filing. You may know that um, Jeff Shedd and um, Gary Lenoy have been working on not only the policy but the procedure, which will make it a lot easier for the schools 
to be able to gather um, electricity.